What is up, you sexy nerds? I am Wildfire One. You're listening and watching Nerds New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. This is episode 136, I believe, season seven. Uh, today with me is I am Fandomaniacs, and I am here to talk about Lord of the Rings with Wild. Yeah, we're doing. I've been, I've been begging them to do this. <laughs> we're finally doing a Lord of the Rings podcast. Uh, it's been a bit. I, I'm surprised we haven't done one already, but. We're going to talk about, you know, the movies and the books, and it's been a while since I've watched The Lord of the Rings, so I'm uh, I'm, I'm heavily relying on this one, because she's a fanatic on that, and that's okay. Uh, before we begin, though, why don't you tell us about how you're a nerd, what kind of nerd you are, and what you like. Spotlight time. I am a, I'm a nerd of multiple things I like. So I grew up on Star Wars, so I'm obviously a Star Wars nerd. I, lo- I like Star Trek. Not I'm not as much of a Trekkie as you, I don't think. Or not many people are. <laughs> not I'm not as much of a Trekkie as you, I don't think. Or not many people are. <laughs> Actually, there's um, probably worse than me, but that's. Oh, I mean, the point. I'm an I'm 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 an anime nerd. I'm a weeb. Like fantasy, Lord of the Rings. Harry Potter, all that sort of shit, comics, superheroes. I'm I'm pretty well I'm pretty well diverse in the nerd. Yeah, I would say I'm so. Some, I'm not some pleb. Ple- you're not a pleb nerd. You're not a baby nerd, no. as we like to say. No. No okay. baby nerd. Okay. She. What kind of anime do you enjoy? The good kind. <laughs> that can. There's such a range there. You just it's so bad. What's your favorite anime at this moment? Oh my gosh, I'm really into it. My Hero Academia right now, as you know, but my favorite that I've loved for a long time is Attack on Titan. Even though it tends, good. To rip you, it tends to rip your soul out and stomp on it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. But both very good shows. Um, yes. Okay, well, let's get into... Let's get right into the beauty of Lord of the Rings. Mr. J.R.R. Tolkien, the uh, insane writer himself, uh... The books are good. They're they're good, but reading Tolkien's stuff is uh, and I is, I, I say Tolkien. How, it can be pronounced Tolkien. It depends on who you are. I'm not. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm saying Tolkien. If you have a problem with it, sorry. But uh, Tolkien's problem, his biggest, my biggest issue with him as a writer is just it's just one thing, and it's not that bad of a thing, but it is a big thing. He tends to go on and on about description um it's very that's very true i completely agree with that yeah i think i i I was i was talking with someone else the other day on the phone about it and i can't remember oh it was my it was samus my my uh another person we had on the show and and i was explaining to her how token's writing was a lot like uh because anne rice does the same thing uh if if not worse uh she there's a lot of really long descriptive shit you can take three or four pages and they're just talking about a tree. You know, the the bark was gnarled and it was a purple green, and it it and it, it just it's just a lot of shit. And it, after a while, you're just like, okay, I'm done with the tree. Let's go yeah, on like, with everything else. To go with the tree example, it does, when he's describing the ends, that's like, okay, that's those are beings, those are characters. But if you're taking that long describing a fucking tree, it's like. Come on, man! <laughs> just, just just keep going, keep yeah. going. Yeah, so th- that's his writing style. So like, if you get easily bored, you're gonna, you're not gonna want to finish the book. You're that gonna... that was how my sister was with the Hobbit. She just she just could not handle it because of how he written in like the old English, using thou thy. She's like, it's like reading the Bible. <laughs> I liked and it. I but then again, I love I love the the beauty behind old English. Um, yeah, it's it's very good. If you just have to be able to sit down and yeah, it's have to force yourself to do it. But once you yeah, and what, I mean especially if you're because yeah, I read the I read it in order. I read the Hobbit, you know, the the first Loring's book, the second and third and whatever, what have you. And uh, I See, what's that? I I was dumb. I um <laughs> I borrowed the over one thousand page or two thousand page collection from my friend that had all three books in it and all the stuff that so it was came like after bible status it was like yeah like, oh, like bible it was thicker than stephen king's it let me put it that way and that bitch is over a hundred over a thousand pages 
I've never read it. I want to, but I've never and I, I want. I've seen. I've seen the movies. Well, the movie I've seen Tim Curry do it, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> He's sitting on the banister. <laughs> oh, I was. I was wondering what the fuck noises you were making. I thought maybe oh like God. you got attacked by a penguin or something. <laughs> I wish I was attacked by a penguin. Um, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. But the his writing style is very it's it's unique. It's uh especially for the time it was unique. It was good. I, I if it's, you want a story that's similar but different then that that's easier to read, go read the Chronicles of Narnia. C. S. Lewis, it's not as bad. Yeah. <laughs> But I will say that the uh, the the even despite his his longevity on like his long explanations of little things, uh, the imagination behind the books is uh, extraordinary. It's amazing. And the reason why he did this is he made the languages up, and then he just made a story to go with them. Yeah, because he loved languages. He loved la- the old Latin and in my head. Like that. And, Somewhere in my head, I like to imagine he's a D and D nerd. Oh, he totally would be a D and D nerd. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I never knew him, but I'm a, like, and I'd hate to assume because I've assumed before and I was wrong. Like, uh, I used to think He Man was a D and D thing, uh, and it, I was, oh boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. But that's beside the point. Well, no, I used to. Well, I thought D. I thought. Well, I thought the 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 idea behind it was a D and D game because it just seemed. So much like one. Bastards of the universe. But it was. <laughs> go watch the toys, uh, the toys that made us, if you want to know what happened to that. But it, anyway, I was wrong. But anyway, I, I, I hate to assume it is what I'm saying because, like, I really a lot of the stuff he has in his in his book is very D and D slash myth related. It very much is. It's also very much kind of. Uh, it's supposed to also be a. Apparently, it's supposed to be a parable to Christianity, but from interviews I've seen and stuff, it wasn't. I could and see the mistake there, but I really, I, I, when I read it, I never thought that. You know, they say the same thing about, you but know. But Tolkien was more subtle about his religion and stuff like that. I mean, yes, he was Christian, but it was, I think what people were getting confused about that is, C.S. Lewis very much said this is a parable of Christianity. Well, yeah, that you can you can definitely see that in Chronicles of Narnia. Chronicles of Narnia was obvious, and at least they yeah. admitted to it. You know what I mean? But uh, I, I, I didn't see it as much in the Lord of the Rings. But that's I just saw chopping story. off orc heads and well, it was shooting a, it was a different world with different problems, and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about that about that series in general and. You know, the the we'll start with maybe the Hobbit. The Hobbit, you know, you're you're following out, you're following around uh, Bilbo, and Bilbo's the man, dude. Bilbo's fucking cool. He's he's, I, I said that. Yeah, Frodo was the 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 in, in the second trilogy. Uh, f- well, for me, one thing I will notice, and I will give my sister this, um, Bilbo in the book and the Hobbit book was a little bit more whiny than in the movie, but. I do think that well, Bilbo's never been away from home before, so it kind of does. Well, that's make the sense Hobbit that he mind would. frame. Yeah, the Hobbit mind frame is they don't yeah. leave. They don't leave their the Shire. They don't. They don't go on adventures. Hobbits don't go on adventures. You know. So here you got, a, you got fucking Gandalf and the Nine Dwarves coming in, and more or less Try fucking it, uh, his house up. I mean, huh? More than nine. It was like thirteen. Yeah, thirteen okay. dwarves. There you go. Well, I was trying to do seven dwarves with. Snow yeah. White, but fuck <laughs> off. Anyway, we have a uh, we have you know Gandalf and his thirteen dwarves coming in and basically just ruining Bil- uh, Bilbo's house. It, would you be ha- these are these are strangers just staying for the night? And I mean, hobbits are kind of. And I I think I think um, Martin uh, Martin Freeman who played Bilbo in the Hobbit trilogy actually did that so well, yes. and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is actually beautiful. Yes. <laughs> And this I like how I pictured Bilbo, Bilbo reacting. And I liked I liked the scene where they're cleaning uh, in the movies. I liked the scene where they're cleaning um, and singing, kind of like they yeah, did in the book. Uh, yeah, in the book they did the same yeah, thing. Yeah, they did the same thing, and they're breaking shit, and, and of course it's driving Bilbo up the fucking wall. 
And that's one thing they did in the Hobbit trilogy, I do think, a little bit better than they did in Lord of the Rings, is they had more more of the songs that were in the book. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, I, I think, I'll, I'll is more, more action-y, more kind of, like, in your face. I mean, Lord of the Rings, the reason why they're rated PG-13, and it literally says this on the warning thing, is for epic battle sequences. Yeah. I think, and I believe those were the first movies to be rated that because of that. Makes sense. Uh, but that I mean, scene... when you have freaking Aragorn coming up and going, there can only be one chopping off an orc's head... Oh, you mean when you go straight Highlander? Yeah. <laughs> my dad, whenever we watch that scene, always shouts, there can only be one. There can only be one. <laughs> my dad's you expect beer. lightning to... Yeah. The, the Reckoning, or whatever it's called. Is that what it's called? That's a whole I different think, podcast. I think so. I haven't watched the Highlander in a long time. That's a whole different time. podcast is the Highlander. That's a whole different thing. But it's very much... It was very much just... Well, certain things they did in the Hobbit trilogy definitely felt like the book, but it was just like the book is better than the trilogy. That, they just and by that time so they had much so much practice. It. By that time they had so much practice from the the movies the prior to it, which they made you know the Lord of the Rings movies before they did the Hobbit movies. So I would assume they had you know they they kind of by that time they knew they they mastered their skill their skill. They knew what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and obviously. Uh, they the person what was the guy's name who did the movies? Peter Jackson. Thank you, Peter Jackson. Obviously, Peter Jackson was a fan because you saw the love behind it. You know. Yeah, he originally back in two thousand one when the original trilogy started coming out, he originally was actually trying to do the Hobbit. Hmm. See, I didn't know that. But he of uh, actually, but then they switched to Lord of the Rings, and it was just going to be two movies. Okay. But then they went to new. But they went and they went to studio, to studio, and they said, "No, we won't do it. No, we won't do it. Cost, it's costing too much." Then they went to New Line, and New Line w- w- said, "Why are you only doing two? Why yeah, not do three? Three books One for each book." Yeah, three books, three movies. And so, and I get why he kind of did the Hobbit trilogy. I, I mean, it was more money, but I could have would have been. I think it would have been better. If it was just two books, two movies. Would have been maybe. probably a little bit better than trying to do all three and throwing in all these different subplots that didn't need to be there. Well, like, what are you talking about in in the uh, the Hobbit? Yeah, in the Hobbit, like, because you have like, you have the elf chick. Um, I forgot her Ta- Tally. I think her name was. Yeah, she wasn't in the book. Legolas wasn't. Legolas well, they, was probably there somewhere. From my understanding, they added they added stuff in from some of Tolkien's other books. That had nothing yeah, to do what, with the Hobbit. I, yeah, that's what I. That's I think that's what. And they, honestly, they well. should have. They should have just stuck with if the movie's called The Hobbit. You know, keep it The Hobbit. Don't. Honestly, it should have been one movie, in my opinion, because one. It was, yeah. The Hobbit's one book. Uh, uh, that is true. You know, and they could have still put in everything and been fine. They did some good things in The Hobbit, and they did some things that I'm. I you know I wasn't a big fan of the hobbit the one was it a trilogy was most, in it wasn't trilogy uh yeah i i hadn't watched the second and third one because the the first one all the additions kind of turned me off the first one i liked because it added some different thing it added some different things um but it was more like the story than the other two were bilbo was I, a I, bomb was the fucking boss I, though That's yes all I, I did say. see all three of them um let me tell you, my sister, I thought she finished reading the book before the third one came out. Okay. And we all know what happens in the Battle of Five Armies. Certain dwarves die. Yes. I don't know if we need a spoiler war- warning or not <laughs> for this. No, the way, this, this is this is Nerds New Sexy podcast. We do not. We swear all the time. Well, we I mean, swear. a spoiler warning. Oh, spoiler. Well, I mean, if, you had, if you're watching this, I'm hoping you, I'm assuming you either watch the movies or read the books or you know Um, i hope you're a nerd watching this because if you're not a nerd watching this you're watching the wrong shit (laughs) because we went so we went to go pick up my sister and my cousin who's my basically my sister's best friend up from theater and they were bawling their eyes out because they because and i'm sitting there going i thought you finished reading the book she goes no it was too boring and i'm sitting there going oh my gosh please you did this to yourself (laughs) Because I'm like, I'm sitting there going, you would have known that Keely Feely and Thorne died 
And I will say this, the pale orc did set out what he did, wanted, and the goblins set out what they meant to do. Why about the line of, line of Durin? But it was like, Martin Freeman's performance in that in that trilogy is probably the best thing. The acting, I mean, if just basing it off the first movie, the acting was amazing. It was. I, I um, can't, Ian I McKellen can't, ret- I can't be Ian upset McKellen, about that. Yeah, Ian McKellen returning as Gandalf was great, Christopher Lee, I mean... The one reason I give the five R I will watch the Battle of Five Armies is because it was Christopher Lee's last film. Well, let's let's mention Christopher Lee for a minute. You know, he did pass away. Bless. I I honestly loved him as an actor. He um, I mean, well, not only was he in Lord of the Rings, but he was also in Star Wars. He was in Star Wars. He was um in Bond. He was. Oh, he's kind of, I'm talking about two of the nerd big nerd franchises, but yeah, I'm I'm. You know, he was a lot of other things. He had Dracula, of course, you know, being the ultimate fucking vampire. You know, I love that shit, too. But honestly, come on. Holy Christopher Lee. Shit, he was it's been he, five years since he died. He was even uh, a character in Kingdom Hearts. Yes, he, played, he was. He played Diz, I believe. It's been five years since he's been gone. Holy crap. Yeah, it's been a while. And, uh... Yeah, Christopher Lee was a good actor. One of the things I really like about Christopher Lee, and I think, I can't remember where I heard this information, is he is actually a swordsman. He knows how to handle yes. a, a weapon. He was a World War II vet. Mm-hmm. And he was only one of the only cast members who had actually met Tolkien. Yeah. Before Tolkien passed away, because he was he was that old. He was born in 1922. He was that, he was that old. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I mean, honestly, even when, even when he, about the time he passed away, he didn't look old. It's just no, his gray I mean, hair. He did, he that was did, all it was. He did a action sequence in the freaking Last Hobbit movie. Oh, the guy could. The guy was amazing. Uh, and he, and I think he loved to act. I think that was not just his bread and butter. He just loved to do it. He loved to do it, and I, I do. I thought he, I thought he was amazing. I, whenever mm-hmm. someone says Chris, like when people, because Amazon is doing a Lord of the Rings TV show mm. for Prime. And I'm sitting there going, it's going to be so hard because you don't have Christopher Lee as Saruman, and so many people are going to have that stuck in their head. And Ian Holm, who just passed away this year, who played yeah. Bil- old, old Bilbo, it's like, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, I forgot Ian Holm passed away. Yeah, he was 88. I was talking to my mom about that earlier. He when played I was such a show. good older Bilbo. Like, he, uh, that, that would... Mm, mm, mm. It was... Uh, but the f- <laughs> one thing that always terrified me when I was younger, and it still terrifies me, I always have to prepare myself, is when Frodo's button know, uh, his shirt back going. up and he has the ring, and then Bilbo's face just turns all yeah, demon-like. I, 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 like, I paused that. I paused that scene because I wanted to see exactly what it looked like. Because it goes, it's so quickly, it's hard to tell. You're just like, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> and it, <laughs> so I paused it, and I, I looked at it, and I'm like, and you could tell that they, you know, that they added uh, CG and whatnot, but it was it was well done and it was so quickly. It was just a good jump scare. Yeah, as <laughs> it was just really bad, really quickly. 20, this almost came out twenty. It's going to be twenty years next year. Yeah, when Fellowship first came out. Because yeah, it the first one was in 20, 2020, 19. No, no, sorry, the first one was in two thousand one. Yes, <laughs> what I'm saying we're we're twenty twenty now, worst year ever. The CG still holds up. Okay. From watching Fellowship, it's well, well they did a lot of practical effects too, and that's yeah, something. they did. I mean, Andy Serkis as Gollum looks still beautiful. looks good, and honestly, like I remember the old cartoon, the old Gollum cartoon. looked like a frog. Gollum okay. looked like a frog, like but like I'm frog. talking about the voice acting, like the way he did the voice and the way from the cartoon. Like I, I know there's a difference. There's a, it's probably a big difference, but that's exactly how I'd expect Gollum to sound. Yeah. I think Gollum had more, less of a, like a raspy voice in the original, in the cartoon. I can't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong, nerds. Um, let me look up who that was, actually, because I'm curious. Yeah, it was, I, I remember, but then again, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at the old cartoon through, um, Nostalgia Covered Glasses, so... It's hard for me, like we talked about earlier, if I watch it again, yeah. I'll probably cringe. <laughs> the, the butthole would cringe, correct. Okay, it came out in 1978. Oh, I guess we played Legolas. Who? 
Anthony Daniels. Okay. That's freaking cool. Okay, and Aragorn was played by John Hurt. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh god, John Hurt was a great actor too. It was a it was a good cartoon! It was! I don't give a fuck what anyone says! <laughs> it was a good um, cartoon! I in the, the nostalgia looking back on it, I still like it. I again I'll watch it again and I'll probably be like, ah it burns. But <laughs> it burns us. But I would I, I still <laughs> would love it. Like oh. So Peter Woodthrope played Gollum. In the In the cartoon. Okay. Why does that I, sound familiar? You I have mean, to IMDB that shit. He probably he's probably That's that's what I'm doing. The animals of farthing wood. I thought that said farting wood for a second. Of course you did. <laughs> um Teabag and the Sunstones. What the fuck is that? Maybe that's you know what? You know what it is? It's uh it's it's Bilbo's oh, no so fuck that. It's Frodo's band as he gets older. Frodo got okay. bored of being on adventures, so he Christmas started. Christmas Carol TV movie, uh, To Catch a King. Some of these sound familiar, but at the same time, it's just like ah. His name sounds very familiar, but we know. It okay, so does. now we know he was he was uh, Gollum in the cartoon. But the, yeah. the the live action, like even like you said, with the graphics, with the uh, the CG, like everything was perfect in the movies, in my opinion, with the exception of him being a little too long. Yeah, and if you if you look at comparisons to other movies that came out at the time, Jurassic Park three came out at the same time, and Jurassic Park blew the way for CG like this to happen, but Jurassic Park three looked like shit. Jurassic compared Park. To Lord of the Rings. But by the time Jurassic Park three came out, Jurassic Park had already shit all over its own franchise. It's it's true. So I mean, the first movie came out, and then they tried the second movie, and the second movie is, eh, and the third movie eh. is just a limp dick, and it was just bad. It was just yeah. very bad, and it just it just it just went downhill from there. <laughs> to be honest with you, but uh, so yeah, uh, the Hobbit movies, of course, are the new ones are are newer than the the, yes. the uh, Lord of the Ring movies, and so the first Lord of the Rings movie came out two thousand one, and I remember when that came out. I remember seeing it, and I remember falling in love with it. And I want to say, I've, I said this for a long time, I said to this day, I'll, I'll believe it to this day, even probably longer than that, but I believe it 100% that I think the Lord of the Rings coming out as a movie is what really brought the nerd um, community to be cool. Yeah. Like, I think I think because it, of things like the Lord of the Rings, that anime started getting more popular, that... Uh, that D and D started kind of becoming a game that people play more. That LARP actually became a thing, you know, more so than it was. That I think because of the Lord of the Rings becoming popular because of the movies, it it kind of skyrocketed nerddom into being sexy. Like if you look at, I mean, it's a, it's inspired so much. Like if you look at the skyrim uh, the elder scrolls franchise oh, yeah. it takes it takes heavily from lord of the rings you can just tell well, by looking at a it. a lot of rpgs do but a lot but the lord of the rings also takes from the guidebook that all rpgs do and that's yeah. of course like myth and legends and like greek lore and 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 all sorts of other stuff like that and that i think that's one of the reasons like i I'm, i get so nipple hard for lord of the rings i love lord of the rings because of that and uh yeah. So the you said you go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I do think the effects in the Hobbit were great. I just wish they tried to do more practical effects again because they didn't. And I feel bad for Ian McKellen who plays Gandalf. He was on the soundstage talking to a tennis ball by himself, and he actually had a breakdown because of it, saying, "This is why I wasn't. I didn't become an, I didn't become an actor to do this. To I talk. became an actor to be with other people. To talk to a tennis ball. I mean, could you imagine that? And. I wish people would do more practical effects, and I, I will say I this: agree. when when Force Awakens came out before it became sh before sequel trilogy became shit, I was excited because J.J. Abrams was actually building the droids. They were using the practical sets. effects, yes, and I, I and I that think was beautiful. I think the Force then, Awakens only had maybe one or two CG scenes, and that one chick, the one that owned the bar, was one of them. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it wasn't that badly done, but it it, it was still like. 
and there there was so much hope like the force awakens was our new hope and it failed us <laughs> it shat on everything it shat on the star wars franchise especially after that and when episode, what, episode 8 came out oh it shat all over our faces it was like that's i'm so worried it was like a german do... porn it was bad like that's why i'm so worried about the amazon um tv show i'm so worried that they're going to change things and make things more political than they need to be and Lord of the Rings does have some politicalness to it but it's just like please just just leave it alone <laughs> yeah please. I mean the politics for Lord of the Rings is is in the Lord of the Rings world you know like Saruman siding with with uh, Sauron well that was Saruman, a political move the thing with Saruman he just wanted um, he was jealous of Gandalf yeah well it was a power he wanted power he was an easy he way wanted to get more power, power. And, and I don't know how much you dive deep into the rabbit hole that is the lore that could compare to all the myths and legends from our world of the Lord of the Rings world. He was so. There's five wizards that came to Middle Earth. Okay, they're actually technically demigods. Anyway. <laughs> See that I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So you had the two blues. You had Radagast, who was beautifully played by Sylvester McCoy. In the Hobbit, who I believe Radagast was supposed to be kind of like a cuckoo guy. He kind he, he chose to if I remember more correctly. the nature than yeah he was supposed to be kind of like a then, a very goofy kind of wizard who yeah. who lost and then you have kind of his Gandalf mind because of Saruman and they actually so you have the gods of the world who are called the Valar and so technically even Saruman Sauron was a demigod. It's just you have to dive into this, but they were all sent there to There's combat a lot of lore Sauron. The oh, I see. But they, fi- but only Gandalf was the only one who really succeeded. Okay. Yeah, Radagast started cared more about the nature and the animals than the people. The two blues disappeared after going to fight some of Sauron's forces in Mordor, and we all know what happened with Saruman. <laughs> the two blues. The two blue yeah, balls. The two blues. <laughs> okay. So I didn't know that. That's cool as fuck. Uh, I know that there's a lot of lore that even I don't know about Lord of the Rings. So there's when I hear books more, coming it's out. Cool. There's still books coming out from Tolkien's writing that his son and grandson are putting out. Oh, okay. So stuff that like he just never posted. He never put out. Yeah, like his letters, his all these different stories. Like that's all the Silmarillion is. Mm-hmm. Is just stories he never got to publish. Well, I know he, he had posted... I know he he published maybe a few more books about the world of Middle-earth, and I know that there's, you know... Uh, and that's and that's, again, that's where some of the, the, the side shit from The Hobbit comes in, which drove me yeah. nuts. But, uh... And that's why I like the lore. And then you mentioned Skyrim. Sky, things like Skyrim has a shit ton of lore, games like that. Um, that's where I just... I, I get super excited about that, because I like things to make sense. And Lord of the Rings just made sense, you know. Middle Earth, everything that happens in Middle Earth just makes sense. So when stuff like comes together and you can put it together in your mind and it clicks, you're like, okay. Here's a another thing that's gonna blow your mind: mm-hmm. the world that Tolkien created, it's not round. Okay. It's a cone. Okay. Yeah, it's a cone shape. It's, it's his really world. I'm not. I'm. That's his world. It can. It can be octangular if he wants it to be. <laughs> But, uh, which is your favorite Lord of the Rings, um, book slash movie? Oh, gosh. I... This includes The Hobbit as well. I mean, you can add that. I, to that. I don't know. I just love the trilogy, like, all together. I, for me, I almost see it just as one giant movie. One giant book, too. Yeah. Yeah. I can see where you're coming from on that one, because, uh, it's just, it's just a sequel to the next, the next part of the story. And yeah. Yeah. It's I will say, and I, I don't know how many other people agree with me, whenever it, switch back, it switches back and forth in the movie, like, I had a hard time reading these parts in the book to the Sam, Gollum, and Frodo parts. I was like, oh. Yeah, it was better <laughs> done in the movie. From, you go from action, and then you go to, Moo, lots pota- those are lots potatoes, precious. <laughs> but you know what? The way they did it in the movie was great, you know? Because in the book... It switches. It, you first, um, it it doesn't do side by side. First, you read what happened with Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, and Gandalf. Then you learn what happened with Pippin and Merry. Then you go to um, Frodo, Sam, and Gollum. Yeah. 
And so, it's it's and it's so like like that in the book. You don't even know if you're reading about the same people or not. Yeah. Like you're you're oh, oh and then you see the name. Oh, okay, Sam. So well, Sam wasn't with the other group. Oh, okay, nope. so you, there, I must be talk, I must be reading about what's going on now. And it, the way it was a little better with the movie, in my opinion. In that yeah, because they were trying to do it chronologically, kind of going, this is happening at the same time as this yeah. and this and this. Um, so let's let's talk about what about just fellowship, just like the fellowship. Let's we can go like movie by movie and book by book. I'm going either way. Like the Fellowship <laughs> of the Ring was a great beginning. It was. Um, I I, I mov- movie wise, I'm talking. It was a great yeah. beginning in general. I mean, but I mean, it, it, the book it takes a little bit to get going because it's actually they don't say this in the movie, and I don't know if it's supposed to be like this in the movie. In the book, it's a 17-year time jump from Bilbo's birthday party to when Frodo leaves. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, and, and in the book it, or in the movie, it's like that. It's because Gandalf immediately starts suspecting it, and it isn't until later till Gandalf realizes, oh shit, this might be the One Ring. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, it, it's kind of cool. Like, <laughs> keep it secret. Keep it safe. Keep it safe. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of cool that, that that the way they did it, and I love the birthday scene. And it's kind of almost full circle if you think about it, because the first time that maybe like Gollum was introduced to the ring was a birthday, and the time that in the movie at least that uh, Bilbo had to say goodbye to the ring on was his on birthday. his birthday. So that was really cool. Um, I I love Merry and Pippin. I, I I've always loved Merry and Pippin. They're they're just so goofy and well they're the, they're the dynamic duo. They're just the goof the goofball group and it's it's so funny and they're so they're like your the drunk friends you take for a good time. That's the fact that's that they Marianne decide Pippin. to steal the biggest firework Gandalf has and set it off, but they don't put it outside. They're in a tent. That would be something Sunra and I would do. I, I was actually thinking that I was going this this is like watching Sunry and Wild <laughs> yeah we we yeah but we would have just, covered it in gasoline first just them going you're supposed to stick it in the ground it isn't the ground outside this was your idea <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're the they're the um the lovable kind of mischievous guys and I think that and it goes through the whole show even when they're serious you know yeah uh but in when they you get to kind of see them grow, and that's kind of another good thing. Uh, you yeah. get to see when you and the casting for them, Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd was I think was great. Oh, it was perfect. It was them. very well done. Um, the accents were amazing. I love. I, I remember them speaking with an accent. Am I wrong? Am I misremembering? No, they they both had accents. Well, they had like an Irish um, accent almost. Pippin had an Irish accent because I think Billy Boyd is Irish. Um, I think Monaghan is um English. I'm yeah. sure Either way, it was beautiful. Um, I loved. I loved. I loved Sean Austin as Sam. I yes. cannot. Sean see Austin. Else as Sam. Sean Austin is just. I mean, he's one of my childhood homeboys. Like I. I don't mean like I know him or hang out with him. I'm talking like the Goonies. I love the fucking Goonies. If you guys haven't seen that episode, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, come on. I grew up with this guy going on adventures and shit. I wanted to be like that when I was a kid. So watching him become Samwise Gamgee, it was beautiful. Like, and the movie I, I think I saw him before that was, uh, oh shit, there's a meme about it. It was either before or after where he where he's playing with that Adam, with Adam Sandler where he's a big old buff guy. You know what I'm talking about? I don't remember. I don't know. I think it was Fifty First Dates. It was Fifty First Dates, where he's a big old buff guy. And if I'm wrong, let me know. But anyway, I I remember um him and and Rudy as well. Yes, but, it, but I know I know he was like he looked like he was roided up in that movie. That's all. I, I never seen I never seen Sean Austin that buff. And to see him, and we're talking Sean Austin, I gotta mention, I gotta give this honorable mention. To see him in Stranger Things. Mm, mm, oh my gosh, yes. And how he died. Mm. One of the shows I, I love is called NCIS. Um, it's one of those crime shows, and he was in an episode. I'm sitting there going, who is that? He looks so familiar. And then his name scrolls across the screen, I'm like, shit. <laughs> Sean fucking Austin. It's, um, just, it's just, he's a, he's... I love him as an actor. He's just a great actor. I, for I Elijah Wood as Frodo, I think was great as well. Elijah Wood um, was perfect as Frodo. He had that like baby face 
that was yes. perfect for Frodo. And yeah, I remember I was reading something about behind the scenes where one of them would, I think it was in the first movie where they were doing that, that scene at the river. And you might know where I'm going with this. One of them was walking, I think it was Elijah. He was walking through the, uh, or it might have been, it might have even been Sean Austin. It was Sean Austin. It was Sean Austin. About. Okay. Yeah. The glass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was Sean Austin. Okay, he was walking through this river and stepped in glass and, like, went through his foot almost. And he, yeah. had, to go, he had to go to a damn hospital. Because they, because what they were, spo- they were supposed to do, they were supposed to clear the river out before the actors got in it. Yeah, they, Someone they fucked it. up. <laughs> yeah. Someone got Elijah, fired that day. I, I, I know the story because Elijah's all sitting there like wanting to look at it and stuff. And <laughs> Sean's just like, Master Photo can touch my bleeding foot all he wants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, he had to go to the hospital for that. I just remember he- I, I read that story online. Uh, and it was just, It's you know, in it was um, the whole like documentary thing that comes with the extended editions. Oh, okay. Um, they talked about it? Can, yeah, they talked about it. And, okay. I um, think I got it in there somewhere. Of course, I might have Ian it. McKellen as Gandalf was great oh, the Ian part was originally Con- offered to Sean Connery Sean Connery should have took it but Ewan, Ewan McKellen fucking blew it out of the water the reason so. why Sean Connery didn't take it didn't understand the script or the book mm, I, I, see if he did and in that case if he did take it he probably wouldn't have put as much love into it so yeah and actually, Christopher Lee thought he was gonna pl- thought he was auditioning for Gandalf, but it turned out he was auditioning for Saruman. Oh, Christopher Lee would have been a good Gandalf too. But I, I just it's hard for me to see Christopher Lee as a good as guy. a good guy because he plays so many villains. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking Count yeah. Dooku as a, as Gandalf. Yeah, that would be that'd be weird. Um, and you know, Kellen was also after um Richard um crap. What was his name? I think Richard Davis or whatever he played the original Dumbledore. Mm. He was offered the part of Dumbledore, but he said, "I don't think I need to be two of the biggest wizards in no. two franchises." <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that. They, prepare for typecasting. That's for fucking sure. But uh, yeah, the, so the first the first movie was good. Um, we already know the story. We won't get too far into the story. It just starts with the Fellowship. It goes on to the Fellowship, I, and then it goes on where the group splits up. Shit, bad shit happens. People yeah. die. <laughs> I love almost every single movie he's in. Sean Bean dies. Let's be honest here. Every, almost every movie, he dies. <laughs> yeah. But how he dies in Lord of the Rings is just, I think, probably it, one of the most... It's a redemption. It's one of the most beautiful and it's, death it's, redemptions. It's one, yeah, well, that's the beauty of his character. I mean, it even happened in the book. Like, almost he, uh, almost better, but... Yeah, he... um. It took three arrows to take him down. Oh, he was a three boss. huge arrows, and he to take was him still down. fucking fighting hard. He was still giving them a run for their money. Because he saw, because he just looks over, he sees Mary and Pippin sitting there, and he's just like, "Okay, I, I have to do this. Yeah, I you, have to. You gotta get go them to safety." But it, was, it, was it, just, it just proved too much. It was but just if we want to talk about the real badass of the whole entire franchise, let's talk about Aragorn. <laughs> oh, how did I know you were gonna say that? He was a badass. He Aragorn is. Was a badass. He, okay, let me tell you something. You Strider. Are, you go more, Viggo Morganson, who plays who played Aragorn, was forty three when he got that part. Did he do all his own stunts? Yes, he did. Very well and done. let me tell you, so there's a part where um, the Orakai that he's fighting that was about to kill Boromir actually throws an actual knife at him, and he actually d- hits it with his sword. Vigo told him to throw an actual knife at him to so he could hit it with his sword. Just see it. Hold on, hold my beer. Hold on. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking bullshit. I, how many actors do you know do that shit that's not like Jackie Chan? <laughs> the, he's just like, hey, what, you guys want to see a cool trick? <laughs> and um, I thought he was great as Aragorn. Apparently there was an actor before Vigo, but I don't know. They never really he did it. A, he did a good Aragorn, in my opinion. I can't see anyone different. I, it, it will be so hard. Um, and then, of course, Legolas. I think Orlando Bloom was great. Orlando Bloom, again, first. I can't see anyone else saying, playing Legolas other than Orlando Bloom. Yeah, I think you asked me something off podcast earlier. I'm going to let you ask me this again. <laughs> would you bone Legolas if you swung that way? If you no, swung, I want if all of the male it. nerds out there who are not of... that doesn't swing that way, I'll use your words, to think about that question. <laughs> Think hard. Just take a we'll take a few seconds. Think about that question. Would you have sexual relations with Legolas? I'm 
My answer is put some boobs on him. I'm on it. <laughs> you don't care if he has a dick. Just put some boobs on him. Butthole is vagina in the dark. <laughs> Secret tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking around. I, I really wouldn't, but like he is a pretty man. He is a I mean, he is a very beautiful man. Him, he, he is. He was born in '77. If you see him now, he looks like he hasn't aged. Same with freaking Elijah Wood. Looks Ooh. like they haven't aged. Orlando <laughs> Bloom really isn't that much older than I am. Yeah, he is. In fact, he is a little older than I am. He is a beautiful man. <laughs> oh, you put a like, blonde wig on him, and goddamn. <laughs> I mean, I will admit, even though I was kind of mad that Legolas was in Des Desolation of Smog, mm -hmm. I, my heart did skip a beat a little bit. <laughs> well, I was like, Holy it shit. was ob that was obvious why he was in it. It was like, hey guys, watch the movie Legolas. Orlando <laughs> Bloom's back, guys. Yeah, it, like, <laughs> there was no reason for him to be there, but it was, eh, it was, yeah, okay. Um, and then John uh, John Rhys Davies, who plays Gimli, is actually like six five in real life. Fuck. Um, they just you, superimposed you, his head on a midget? <laughs> and you also probably know him in, from Indiana Jones as well, because he's Indy's friend in Indiana Jones. Yeah. If, <laughs> and just, if you watch the movies again... <laughs> they just glued a picture of his face on a, a little person. <laughs> just walk around. So, <laughs> so in, see oh. when they're in the Mines of Moria, and, they're, and the cave troll's about to come in, all the orcs are about to come in, they, he was telling people to actually come up, and he was actually hitting him with the fake axe, like actually hitting him on the head with the axe. He was bop axe. him? <laughs> yeah, he was actually hitting them. But some of the guys had like bruises and stuff. That's so. Well, I like, mean, uh, he got into his accent, or got into his accent, he, he got into his part, and you know, I mean, it's not as cool as hitting a fucking real knife away with a sword, but yeah, that's pretty badass. But. I, I, I love the part, and this will always make me laugh when they're in the Mines of Moria. Just when they shut the doors, and um, Boromir just turns around and goes, They have a cave troll! Like, so exhausted, it's just like, oh my god. They have a cave troll. <laughs> the, you know, the, and the fact that, that Boromir and Legolas had this thing where they're, like, constantly... Ba not battling, but, like, it's Gimli a challenge. And, um, Gimli, sorry. Gimli and Legolas. Yeah, Gimli and Legolas, sorry. Gimli and Legolas had this thing where they're constantly, like challenging each other. I thought that was pretty cool. That was funny. I love just... Because if you if, if you watch the films again, you'll notice over the films Gimli's face, John's face keeps getting puffier and redder. It's because he was allergic to the makeup. He was allergic to oh, the prosthetic. Oh, I just thought that was like, he's a dwarf. <laughs> no, it's because he was allergic to the makeup. It just worked out. I mean, he, he suffered for his craft, but he looked like a dwarf. Because of it. It wasn't even just the makeup. It was because <laughs> they're supposed <laughs> to be chunky and chubby and cute. Oh damn it! Well, my hat. Well, if I was wearing a hat, hats off to you because that that you did the part. You did amazing. In fact, I in fact the dwarf was probably one of my favorite characters. I I <laughs> I love them, but Mary and Pippin and Sam would probably always be my favorite. Sam, it, I know it's the effect of the ring later in the movies, but. Frodo just, it, he gets on the nerves of people, because, and I know it's the effect of the ring, Yeah. but it's at the same time, he's like, you've known Sam for years, but you're listening to evil make a douche face over here, which is freaking Gollum. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the whole idea, the whole area, the whole part between Sam and, and, and Frodo is supposed to show friendship. Well, it yeah. wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any actual uh, movement of that, there wouldn't be any, any uh, progress to that if there wasn't something that stood between it. And that, of course, in this point is the ring. When And, you know, the most beautiful part is when he's like, let me help you, Mr. Frodo. When he's trying to take the ring for him. And fucking Frodo finally comes to his senses. Yeah. You know, because that ring just has a, a hold on, on people, on anything. And the fact that Frodo lasted as long as he did with the ring just shows that... But And one thing, Sam never was once tempted by the ring. No, because he all. really never really held it that long and, and you gotta look at it this way saw how everyone how around him was yeah, yeah. And i think uh, the more you I, honestly if i remember correctly i think the more you actually use it the more effect it has on you as well not just holding it yeah. but if you use it and and yeah. and samwise never really used it he just had it around his neck he held it and, and for he, a bit. um the difference is um 
with that, after the battle of Shelob, the big bitch spider, he actually, um, when the, he heard the orcs coming, he put the ring on and turned invisible. In the Wait, book. In, oh, in the book, you're right, yes. Not in the film, but yeah. in the book. So, so if he could have gotten corrupted. Frodo but, used it much more yeah. than once, though. And, and we got to look at it this way. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think the book even says that it has a slower effect on hobbits. It does, because hobbits don't see greed yes. or anything like that. So, well, I mean, hobbits are greedy. They, it kind of, it kind of does that with, remember, with like, Fro- with like Bilbo's family trying to take all his shit. They yeah, are greedy, but, but they're not, like, dwarf greedy. Yeah. So, Food yeah. and stuff What's like What's theirs that. is theirs. That's what how they look at it, you know. <laughs> uh, not, um, not what yours can be mine. And I think that's, that may be what you mean. That makes sense. What was your favorite battle out of all the Lord of the Rings? Oh, the most epic battle would probably... Well, in the movie, it was the... Uh, I think it happened in the book, too, where the, the ghosts fucking came in on oh. the battle when everything looked like oh, it was yeah. done. You know, uh, but my favorite battle in general in the books would be the the five armies in the in the Hobbit. Yeah, that one that was great. Well, it was um, epic because you have you yeah. have you have like groups from every single even the fucking eagles got involved. You know, some shit's bad when the eagles are getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've never gone to the park and seen like people larping until you have an eagle Kah! come down and fuck you up. <laughs> if you see that shit, you know shit's gone bad. Okay. I want to. Should we address? Should we address the biggest complaint a lot of people have with the eagles in Lord of the Rings? I in the movie or in the in the book or both. Both. Why I really didn't so have a problem with go, eagles. But why go on. didn't they just take the eagles? Oh yeah, at first, yeah, because they helped them. I think the book True. explains that though. It doesn't really in the book. You have to go more into the lore and the depth of it. Because the eagles didn't really involve themselves in anything that didn't involve them. The only reason they helped Gandalf was because he knew Gandalf. You know, when Gandalf called for them, when they... Yeah, he had, um, um, the reason... The king of the eagles was indebted to Gandalf. Yes. Because Gandalf saved him. Yes. And the other reason why, if you go into the nitty-gritty of the butthole that is the lore of of Middle-earth, the eagles... Okay, so you have the gods, you have the Valar, you have under them, you have the wizard, and then almost at the, the same level and a little under, you have the eagles. The eagles are almost essentially demigods as well. Okay. They are that powerful. <laughs> and <laughs> and he, just being around that, like, if you imagine how Gandalf was freaked out when Frodo offered him the ring, those, those eagles are, can be almost just as powerful as Gandalf. That, those eagles could be corrupted real easily as well because of how powerful they are. That's one reason why they didn't, and... So they don't put themselves in that position where they have to yeah. make a choice. That makes That's sense. why they only came after the ring was destroyed. Okay. In, in, the, in the book. Because they didn't, they didn't want to... I, I, I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to be like, oops, they fu- we fucked up. I, or they fucked up, so therefore we helped them, so we fucked up too. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to be a part of that. Just in, in, about the time the end, yeah, it makes sense. But I... My favorite battle I love Helm's Deep is always a great one yeah Moria especially is a good one yeah um you know you shall not pass everyone knows that everyone knows that um what you the think? Balrog is creepy yeah I was though. just about Holy. to ask you about that what do you think of the Balrog versus like how they explained it in the book well how they depicted it in the movie is was almost what I imagined from the book. Yeah, yeah. It's it's creep. It was it's it's creepy looking. It's supposed to look like a devil for a reason. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's old and it's ancient and it's evil. And <laughs> it's the same thing. Kind of when like Smaug came to the Lonely Mountain was because they dug too deep and they got too greedy. Yeah, the dwarves don't seem to learn. <laughs> no, but you know. I mean, money. Gold is gold. <laughs> Gold is gold and butthole is pussy in the dark. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, so what? You, you were saying your favorite battle? I, I, I think it has to be battle of the Peregrine Fields outside of Gondor. It has to be that the big like almost final battle. Okay. With all when the with all the elephants and when Ryder, the Rohan are there and is everything. That, is that the one where the Ents got involved? Or are you talking about the? You no, know, you're talking about the Gondor battle. I'm talking about Gondor. Yeah, um, okay. When the ends got involved, is um, was the fun, yeah, was when the all the trees just move there and they just pop, popped up and they eat the orcs, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess I, I don't know if eating is cr they just put them in their trunks whatever trees have I have I have no idea whatever but, ants um, do like does it not have a I penis love one. I, I, I love Gimli and Legolas how they keep having the counting while they're killing everything yeah that was one of the be the best parts and it, it kind of went that kind of went on through the series, did it not? Yeah. Like, I love how they're on the other side trying to sneak to where they're, like, barric um, trying to get into the keep. Aragorn and Gimli are there, and they're trying to figure out how to get over there, and Gimli goes, Toss me. <laughs> Don't tell anyone you did this. <laughs> Don't tell the elf. <laughs> Don't tell the elf, yes. I freaking love it. it. It was, it you know, they did well. Like, they also, you know, some of the stuff they added was... Uh, I'll add it, you know what I mean? But the, the stuff they added in the Lord of the Rings trilogy was perfect. You know, the, they, right. they found that center between, like, serious and silly. Then a lot of, uh, I don't know if you knew this, um, back when they thought Merry and Pippin were killed by the Riders of Rohan by accident when they were slaying the orcs, Viggo Morgenson broke his toe. Oh, no, I didn't know that one. So when he kicks the helmet, he kicked it so hard that it broke oh, his toe. Oh, no, I did read about that. I did read about that. He kicked the helmet, yeah. So I take yeah. it back. How bad was his um, toe broken, though? I don't know. I, I just know that he broke his toe, and that scream of anguish was him was, screaming because of his yeah. toe, but he kept going. <laughs> yeah, he, he continued acting, which, fuck, dude. That show, like, people, some people got hurt. That movie, people got hurt. Those movies, shit happened. The struggle I mean, was I real. Think if I remember correctly, it took like four months to film the Battle of Helm's Deep, which is longer than wasn't, it should have. Wasn't it didn't have to do with like it raining and there's issues. Raining there's issues and being, they're waiting for like the uh, perfect of perfect weather and. Uh, but them having the rain actually, I think helped. I think so with too. The atmosphere. I think so too. I think so they actually had they made certs for the people who were in that that said I survived the Battle of Helm's Deep. <laughs> That, actually, I would love a shirt like that. I, w I would yeah, love to have a shirt like that. One major difference between the book and the movie of Helm's Deep, and a lot of people, I guess, had a problem with this when the movie first came out, was el the elves that came. Because that oh, didn't happen in the book. as backup, yeah. They well, if in the book, um, Amir, um, the nephew of the King of Rohan, wasn't ever banished. Oh, that's right. So him and his men were still there, so they had plenty of men. And, That's but right. Gandalf did disappear for a few days, and I did. Oh yeah, yeah, back. he did. He he did, and that's when he came as. Oh, in the book, it was he came back as Gandalf the White, right? Well, is that, he came is back that when as, he appeared. No, that that was way before this. My, he he yeah. left and got more men to come back. Oh, kill. that's right. Yeah, because yeah. He, he appeared before that, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, he was going. Forest. He was going to get help because yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a while. It's been and, a long while. I, I don't know if you knew that know this, but the guy who plays Grimmel Wormtongue, the the steward of yeah. um, Rohan, I know Wormtongue, the, the creepy dude. Yeah, the Igor looking um, he, motherfucker. He plays Chucky. Oh, that's the voice of Chucky. That's the voice and the actor who uh, of the serial killer who put his soul in the Chucky. I love Chucky's voice. I mean, I never got to see the Mark Hamill Chucky. Oh, Mark Hamill Chucky was. Mwah. I heard I mean, that was a Hamill. sad movie, by the way. It, it was is. it was more <laughs> sad than like scary. It, it, yeah. Sam has told me that. I was I was a little upset. It's but I guess it's like with any book adaptation, people aren't gonna be a hundred percent happy. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always gonna be the people that are, the book's better. You know, it, it, no matter what, it, you see it with you know with the Lord of the Rings. You see it with like uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. That's what I was get, trying to get to. You um, know. One thing that I've heard some people complain about is how Faramir is in the movie. Because in the movie, Faramir's trying to take the ring to please his father. While yeah. in the book, he isn't. But to me, that makes sense. Some of if the, you think uh, about it... Some of the changes do... They did an alright job with that in the movie. I think that... Because if you think about it, he's trying so hard to please his father while his... Because his father's an ass to him. Praises Boromir... He even says he wished Faramir died and Baromir lived. Yeah. And you're trying to he he's trying to please his dad so much that he goes out and nearly dies because of it. And then his dad, of course, notice tries me, to dad pie. <laughs> notice me, dad pie. Notice me. I I hate his his dad is probably like one of the biggest assholes. <laughs> well, that's and, just good writing. 
with, if, yeah. if you're meant to hit a character and the character is hateable, like, and you really don't like him, you're like, I hope that guy dies. Yeah, that's good. I right. mean, when pe I mean, with, in the Harry Potter, when people hate Dolores Umbridge more than Voldemort, <laughs> it's kind of like that. Yeah. It's like, you're, it's just so interesting that you, you can have a character that you hate more than the actual, like, main villain of the story. You know what I, I liked about the fact, you know, the whole, the whole premise of Lord of the Rings you hear about you hear about Sauron, you hear about the bad guy throughout the whole fucking show, but you really don't see him other than flashbacks. You just see the big eye looking at things. And uh like that's the whole idea is to make sure he doesn't come back. Like you 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 know that's a bad guy. You know that's like you know that's that's a badass. Like let's not a, let's avoid this guy coming back. There's going to be a whole shit ton of drama when he's back. Yeah. So let's dis we, let's destroy this ring that everyone's attached to, you know, the one ring that could literally that that might give someone enough power, but and honestly it wouldn't or do anything to help anyone because all it would do is wind up in in the hands of the the one it's meant to wear anyway. Yeah. But uh, like, I don't blame people for thinking let's use this as a weapon because I I don't either because they don't understand they don't they understand think, they, they, they think they can use it but they, they don't. weren't the ones they that can. made it they in fact they fell for his bullshit the first time so they don't they think that maybe the person who's anyone who has that ring is gonna it's gonna be able to control it just doesn't work that way and and it's it's good that it didn't turn out that way because it would have been bad I mean Elrod was there three thousand years ago she, he could have easily pushed a seal door. <laughs> And well, so was that butt. blonde bitch that went ape shit in the what the second movie, the first first movie, first movie, first um, movie, Lady Gabriel. <clears throat> yeah, Gab. What what is what's her name? Gadriel. Gadriel. Okay, but yeah, when she gets all fucking like Disney, all <laughs> fucking crazy looking on on fucking on Frodo. That's another one of those scenes. I was like, God damn! <laughs> you know, like power of Christ compels you, bitch. <laughs> she uh. Oh my God! Like fuck she's that. an old priest and a young priest. She needed all the priests. <laughs> There's oh, she needed a priest gangbang. That was fucking horrifying. Like that was. She's like, I'll become more part. I'm like, get back, bitch. Have some coffee. Have a Snickers. <laughs> you need a Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> You're not acting like yourself. But uh, I mean. But she did. She did pass the ch the test of yeah, not she, taking the ring. She did, and um, she kind of. It was kind of a test that she gave herself, and that was a dumb idea because what if he did just be like, "Oh, you later, bitch, deuces." <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours. I didn't want this to begin with. I think at that point Frodo knew. We well, saw what it did no to, else, to yeah. Bilbo. He saw he saw Bilbo his his loving uncle change the moment he saw that that ring for the first time in how long? Seventeen years. Yeah. And he had it in his pocket. He, so he, he honestly, the, he was holding that thing. You knew he was holding that thing and not even knowing it. Like, it was staying close to him. Or rather, he was keeping it close to him, maybe un subconsciously. Kind of a, a show of how powerful the hold of that ring has on you. Especially for a hobbit who's had it for 17 years. I'm surprised he's not more like, you know, my precious. <laughs> I'll suck your dick for a Klondike bar. <laughs> Frodo wasn't wearing the ring during those 17 years. He kept it in an envelope and put it away. You mean Bilbo? Yeah. Well, yeah. Bilbo, well Bilbo had it for 60 years. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're talking Fro when Frodo got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. It was hidden um, in an envelope for a while. Because Gandalf told him, just keep it away. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Um, <laughs> you want to hear something that will shit your pants. Um, so I, I spider, hope it's me that shits my pants, because I'd sure hate someone else to shit my pants. <laughs> um, so, she loved the the big the big spider. Her mom, um, her ancestors were as big as mountains. I don't doubt that one bit. That sounds like something that Tolkien would do, as far as in his, because Shelob was a big bitch, and she was a powerful bitch. Shelob was old, was an also also very old. Yeah. And very and very powerful and very wise actually for for a fucking giant spider. Yeah, but just picture that for a second. You just wake up one morning and you see a, a freaking spider the size of your of, of, of a mountain. If that's happening, I'm going to I'm I'm going to Mars. I'm living in Mars. <laughs> I hate I hate big black widows. Like I'm I'm cool with all sorts of spiders, but if it's brown and black, I'm fucking killing it. And if I can't kill it because it's the size of a mountain, fuck that shit. I'm out. 
<laughs> nope, nope. Call, they'll call the Ghostbusters. Call someone. I'm fucking out of here. You better fight. Get a big can of Raid. Fuck that. <laughs> just imagine a big fucking spider and someone just walks up to it with Raid. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it dying? It's spraying his leg and shit. I mean, there was giant spiders in Harry Potter, but Shelob scares me more than Aragog ever well, cause, did. It's because Shelob was intelligent. Shelob, well, so was Aragog. I, well, then I don't know much about Harry Potter. I'll admit that. But Shelob but was like... I think she was a schemer. Is, she, well, I think that, yeah, I think the difference is Aragog wasn't evil. Shelob was evil. <laughs> yeah. She, wait, that that might be a good difference. And what book was like Aragog one, in? He was in the second book. What movie was he in? Because I'd probably... The second be, movie. Okay. Chamber of Secrets. Okay. Um, I always well, thought he also kind of shows up in the sixth movie. Um, he's dead, though. I always thought the Chamber of Secrets was when, like, they found Dumbledore's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be terrible if you had an invisibility cloak. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen things I cannot unsee. <laughs> no, Sunry would be looking at you and go, okay, we're going to take this and we're going to go look at the girls' chamber of secrets. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Can't prove nothing. But, I mean, the Basculus in Harry Potter scares the shit out of me, and I don't even know if there's giant freaking snakes in freaking Middle Earth. Oh, the basilisk. Um, yeah, fuck that thing. But so, Middle Earth is a very interesting place. Uh, I know that there's a lot of really cool uh, ideology that, that Tolkien came up with behind it. So, you know, and the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit all together are just amazing. It's an amazing story. It really is. Um, it's like I, I'll I'll attribute to. I usually say stuff like. Uh, Star Wars is basically a, a fairy tale in space. So the original Star the original, Wars. The original trilogy is a hero's journey, and then prequels are 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 a Greek tragedy. Yeah, but what I'm saying is is that I attribute the original um, the original trilogy of Star Wars to being a a fairy tale in space. You know, it has magic. It has dark knights it has your not your normal knights you ha- it has the old old man wizard it, it's it's just a fairy tale in space in my opinion yeah well the lord of the rings was more or less just a fairy tale and yeah. and it it was be- they each one has its own beauty it brings its own its own like majesty to your imagination and i think because of stuff like the lord of the rings and because of stuff like um star wars that that nerds were everywhere you know, young and old, and in, in, in the '90s and the '70s and the '60s to now, have been able to come up with. You know, it just jolted their imaginations, and I think that because of that, we have games like Skyrim, we have games like The Elder Scrolls, we have games like uh, uh, Diablo. We have, yeah, you know, we name, have name your name have, your fantasy game. Final even have fantasy. the Middle Earth games. Oh yeah. Which the Which are, uh, Shadows of War and Mordor were both very good. Yeah, and the fact that it barely scratched the surface of the world that he created. Oh yeah, those just, those even with just, those four books, that was just a little bit barely. of lore, and a world of lore, and that's what made it beautiful. Uh, I think we're towards the end of this. Is there any fun facts you want to share with us before we we uh, end the podcast? Because we can Not talk. We, I can think of. Because we can talk Lord of the Rings all night. We'd be here till six. We, we totally and, could. We and, could. And, and it's it, but I uh, just it's but uh, let us know what you guys think. Uh, did we miss anything? Is there anything we didn't get to touch base on? Let us know. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things that I hell I that that I didn't know happened in the movie, and some things I did know that that uh, fandom said. Uh, let us know what you guys think about your favorite parts of the movies. Uh, do you think we should have? Think Shelob should have had a sex scene? <laughs> no. What are you talking about? I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being goofy. So, all right, guys. With that said, we'll see you next week on the next episode. I believe it'll be 137. We're getting close to the end of the season. Uh, we end the season on 140, and then we'll be taking our breaks. Uh, I mean, by the time this comes out, I believe it's going to be October. It'll be a few weeks, which will be beautiful. Uh, we have a lot of stuff planned in October. I think you and I are going to be playing some spooky games. Yep, we're going to both kiss ourselves. What are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, 
We'll go ahead and end the podcast. Thanks, guys, uh, uh, for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week on the next episode of Nerds New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. Till then, we re- remember to stay nerdy, stay sexy. Always. <laughs> 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 what you don't like it <laughs> your face <laughs>